to game four of the semifinals. So essentially the way this works is this is the, the winner's bracket. There's still the loser's bracket on the opposite side. It's a double elimination tournament. So whoever wins this will go to the finals. Whoever loses this will still have a secondary opportunity within the loser's bracket. I don't think I'm going to cast the loser's bracket games. Mostly because uh, I've got other BSL games to do. I've got season two that's coming. I think it's actually being played right now. Sorry, the signups. At this stage of things, it's too late. Looks like we're seeing a liftoff here from Nagnar, who's starting as the red at the five o'clock location. At the three o'clock location, approximately, I'll call this the inside three. I'm never sure if to call the inside here or the inside this direction, but he's starting as the green Zerg ZVZ once again. This is on Sparkle, which is an island map. You've got these layers alongside uh, these infested command centers, but it looks like initially, and actually with air, it'll be yeah, it'll be an interesting play because I assume usually ZVZ you see the Mutalisk rush, but this is where the capturing infested command centers is even more important on this map because if you capture infested command centers, that allows you to lift them off and get aggressive in your because you can see all this landable area back here. So getting your gas early, getting infested command centers in your opponent's space is critical. Sponge skipping. So it looks like he's moving to the north to kind of do a capture this direction, but he's moved this infested command center towards Nagnar's base. Nagnar is floating. It looks like this overlord spotted, but he's moving this infested command center to the right. Looks like the drone is going ahead and going for that. Was this a 12 hatch? 11 hatch. And grabbing an extractor. I, was there an overlord even built in the midst of this? I don't think there's an overlord built. Maybe just off the captured command center? I hope. It doesn't have to be a standard build order. It looks like Nagnar, I think, is going to get the lead because I think he's going to be able to capture this command center and this command center. But as far as the getting infested Terrans in the opponent's base, Sponge might have the lead with this scout. So he's going to see the creep right here. It looks like this creep getting spotted. So actually both players ending up with, uh, with uh, potentially Sponge a little bit later than, because he, he's not moving that infested command center. Maybe he's going to try to land in the natural expansion. There's a, another hatchery being taken at kind of a odd side location where there's just like a pocket of minerals right there. But already an initial infested Terran being produced. This drum starting to attack right there, a spawning pool being forced otherwise. So a big lead to Nagnar, I'm going to have to say. And this command center just floating nearby. This is disastrous, I think. So first Infested Terran built, that was actually dangerous because if it triggered on that drone, might end, might have ended up doing damage to itself. Drones trying to scatter, pulling off the line. Decent hit, and that's not where you want to have them. So it's going to hit the hatchery as well as a handful of drones. That's going to give Nagnar the economic lead. He's already got that natural expansion uh, building, but not quite up. So technically Sponge has two base... Oh, sorry, this is going to be three hatcheries. So it has two hatcheries... The better mining location down here for Sponge, but behind, 9 drones to 13, and more infested Terrans are being built. In fact, I might have missed... Uh, no, I didn't miss another hit, I don't think. Still, two Zerglings peeling off. I don't know that two Zerglings is going to be sufficient. They're going to try to box this... This is a great play. Trying to box this infested Terran in as it spawns, but unfortunately, it's a small unit. It needed two Zerglings on either side. There is a Sunken Colony, but that's not getting it done. That Sunken Colony actually not taking the full splash damage that was focused on that hatchery. Now, a second infested command center in here for Nagnar. Nagnar looks like he's going to walk away with an easy victory. Second creep colony being produced. Still nothing in this base. This infested command center landing here, I don't think, I'm not sure that it re realized the location. This infested Terran blowing up, doing some splash damage. But there's still another infested command center on location. This creep colony now being morphed. Sponge still behind economically overall, but also he's one shot away from losing his hatchery. And he does not yet have three... Oh, and he's continuing to produce creep colonies. So he's not saving up the minerals that are required to build an additional hatchery. So that's going to explode. 35 health left because it hit the egg rather than the hatchery. So it just hit the splash zone main, rather than the main target damage. However, another infested Terran coming out. Keep in mind, it's 500 damage on the primary target. There, that hatchery's down. No minerals. That's going to be GG. Uh, no, actually, I take it back. There's the natural expansion down here. Forgot about that. So not game yet. But a big, big, big lead to Nagnar right off the bat. <laughs> Sponge laughing as he's going to go ahead and try to distance mine. He thought he was, okay, officially saying he thought he was top left. So he's infested Terrans on location. All three infested command centers here. Nagnar with a big advantage now with all three infested command centers in his base. They're going to call GG right there. And we will move on to game five. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.